Let me bring on Chris. Chris, are you ready to go? Hit the unmute button and come on in. How are you? Doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good morning. How you doing? Doing great. We got some hellos here, by the way. We got Stephanie from Detroit, Michigan saying hi. Hi, Stephanie. We've got hey. Pam from North Dakota. We've got uh, West Indy from Dubai. Dubai. Awesome. Nice. Amazing. Great to have you. Uh, Matthew says, where can I find the show notes for today and tomorrow? Great question. I'm going to plug these show notes in chat right now. It is uh, ecomtech.link forward slash black 21 dash show notes. Uh, those are the show notes here. Bookmark this page. We've got a team member taking notes from Chris and all of our presenters so that if you miss a link or if you miss a screenshot or something like that, it's going to be in our show notes and you'll be able to take some uh, action items away. You know, the goal of the next two days for everybody here, it's not just to absorb the content into your brain. It's to take action behind that. We're trying to make that as easily attainable as possible. All right, Chris, I'm really looking forward for your session. I'm going to add your screen here. I'm going to uh, pop out. If you want to hit the hide button on yep, that yep. screen yard, sharing your screen thing, just so it's gone. There and go. I'll let you take it away. Really looking forward to your talk. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for joining, getting up nice and early. Hope you're all caffeinated and ready to go. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Well, hell, we're going to talk more about the season because I don't think we should limit ourselves to just these two days, right? I mean, we're not just here to sell on two days. We're here to make as much money and do as much as we can across the season. And over these next couple of days, you're going to hear a lot about marketing and ad spends and all these different strategies surrounding ways to maximize sales and maximize ad campaigns and all these things. That's kind of what the direction you typically hear. I wanted to take a different road. I wanted to go to a little bit of an overview of Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the holiday season, and what it all is, what it all means, what it's all about, and maybe challenge you in a couple things that we don't typically think about. So I'm going to take a look, first of all, some dates. There are some dates in here that we don't always think about. We know about Black Friday, we know about Cyber Monday, but there's a lot. There's a ton of these little holidays and pseudo holidays that pop up that can actually be opportunities for businesses. So let's dig into them a little bit. And we're going to talk about some ways to analyze and set some goals that maybe are, uh, you know, not at the top of mind as you go into it, especially this time of year. And we're still a little bit early. And then website preparation. And then we'll talk about some post holidays. And hopefully you all stay awake. Everyone's not uh, you know, nodding off during this whole thing. Got the, the, the glare on the head. I'm nicely shaved up. So we're ready to rock and roll for this thing. So let's take a look at some 2021 dates. You know, last year was a bit of an anomaly. Last year was kind of crazy. We all know it was COVID in 2020. They say, well, we can't compare last year to this year and apples and oranges and all these kind of things. I, you know, I don't know if that's entirely true. Last year, you know, what uh, I think Adobe Analytics says between Thanksgiving and Black Friday, online sales was 188.2 billion with a B in sales and online sales. That's a big, giant number, right? And I don't think we can dismiss that in any way, regardless as to what COVID was going on or whatever was happening. However, we know that these weren't temporary adaptations. I mean, we're almost two years into this whole COVID Thing. I don't know if we're post-COVID or in the middle of COVID or coming out of COVID, but this isn't a temporary thing. People ordering groceries at home, shopping online, curbside pickups, these are behavioral changes. And we're still seeing these. We're still seeing this in e-commerce. We're still, still seeing these in retail. We're seeing these everywhere. There's no reason to think that suddenly, you know, October 1st is going to come and all of a sudden all this is going to change. That somehow this holiday season is going to be different than last year's. It's just going to magically change. So I think we have every reason to believe that this year, a lot of these trends will continue to carry over. So we can kind of rest assured that we can look at last year. We can take some of that, take comfort in some of that is carrying forward. We don't have to reinvent the wheel this year again. So some important holidays. See what I did there? It took me a while to think about that. I'm not that bright of a guy. But Black Friday coming up. Um, you know, Black Friday always starts to kind of mark mark of this holiday season, that kind of Thanksgiving weekend and all that kind of thing. But even though that's kind of the focus and most people talk about that BFCM and, you know, there's really a lot of smaller holidays and smaller dates that you can take advantage of. We're going to dive into the significance. We're going to look at a couple of different opportunities in here that might be right for you and your business and some different things you can do to capitalize on these. But some of these you might have to do a little bit of uh, planning. And that's why we're talking about this now, because, you know, 
we're actually coming up on October 1st. And it seems kind of crazy to say that because this year has gone really fast. But unfortunately, in a month, it's really going to be almost too late to take action on some of these things. I mean, if we're talking about getting SEO ready, that's not something you can decide, you know, on November 14th, you wake up and think, oh, I should probably probably take a look at SEO today and get that all ready for Black Friday. That's not really how this works. So some of these things we really need to give some thought to today, start getting some planning in place if you haven't already. And hopefully you are, hopefully you're well on that road already. But, you know, let's dig in a little bit here. So Black Friday, right? Thanksgiving, all these days. There's a couple things happening this year we need to talk about. And we got to kind of set the tone and keep things in context. Traditionally, this first part of November, you know, that first through the 25th or whatever, the days leading up to Thanksgiving, everyone's out there and they're just eagerly awaiting the start of the holiday season, right? They're not really spending a lot of cash, doing a little bit of shopping, kind of tinkering around, trying to kind of peek and see what sales are going to come up. Um, you know, but it's not really translating into a big sales, at least not generally. You know, a lot of retailers, a lot of small businesses are using these days to really build up excitement in the customer base. You're teasing out leaks, you're teasing out previews, you're getting some email campaigns going and VIP access, and you know, that kind of thing. You're just really letting people know what to expect over this season. But what's happening this year? I mean, everyone's following the news and I hopefully looking at trends and things. I mean, Port of Los Angeles and, you know, you got container ships stacked up and supply chains having issues and talking about cell phone shortages and chip shortages and toy shortages and all these kinds of things. I saw a stat uh, over the weekend that said one out of six shoppers has already completed 90% of their holiday shopping. That's kind of crazy. I mean, we're not, we're still in September and one out of six has completed it. Um, there is that sense of a bit different. So this whole first part of November being no sales, just kind of kick back and slowly tease things out. That might be a little bit accelerated this year. We might need to take action a little bit earlier to capitalize on any, I don't want to say fear because that sounds terrible, but any, you know, shoppers who are a little bit nervous about shortages. And, you know, if we are in business and we're in business to, you know, make money and capitalize on, you know, the avail availabilities in the marketplace and take opportunities, seize opportunities when they come. Well, you know, that might be now, that might be in October and that might be in early November versus waiting to the last minute when everyone's already got their shopping done. So then you come up on Thanksgiving, right? Now, this is one of the big controversial ones. People don't want to talk about selling on Thanksgiving and having, you know, big sales on Thanksgiving, being open on Thanksgiving and all of that. I get it. It's really what you have to do. It's right for your business, for your family, and, you know, along with what you believe. However, Thanksgiving does continue to be that unofficial start of the holiday season. And, it, you know, it'd be, we'd be remiss not to talk about it today. A lot of retailers offer special promotions on Thanksgiving. There's a lot less competition than there is on Black Friday. And as a small business, um, you know, there's not as much competition online. You're not competing with some of these giant ad campaigns that are out there dominating Black Friday. So it can be a decent strategy to go out there and try to grab some sales on Thanksgiving. Um, it's just not everyone's cup of tea. Then you dig into Black Friday, all the madness happens. You know, this was always a big day for brick and mortars, right? Huge day. We see it on TV, the, you know, people getting in fist fights over the flat screen TVs at Walmart or whatever. It's all kinds of mayhem. But Black Friday is evolving and it's been evolving over the last few years. In-store foot traffic, still strong. It'll be strong this year and stronger this year than last year, of course. But shoppers, you know, they, they're still turning steadily to e-commerce. They're just doing it in a different way. What we see is people going out uh, midday. So they wake up in the morning, they get online, they have their coffee, they check the sales, they see what's going on. They might do a little bit of shopping, you know, super early, 5, 6 a.m. Then they get in the car, they go out to the Best Buys and the Walmarts and the whatever, they take advantage of Black Friday sales. They get back home midday, they get back online and they do some more online shopping. They're in that shopping mode. They're in that buying mode. They're ready to spend. They have their list. Whatever they didn't get out there in person at the mall or whatever, they're going to go online and try and finish that up as best they can. So the savvy e-commerce seller, savvy, the savvy business online is really going to know that there's an opportunity early morning and late afternoon to capitalize on these sellers, on these people, who, on these buyers who are really in that buying mode. However, you know, if you wait and try and drop your Black Friday ad at 9 a.m., well, you're going to miss that early morning crowd, right? So it is a bit of a strategy that goes into place. And I think understanding this behavior is really, really key 
to winning on Black Friday if that's part of your strategy. Now, the next one up is this Small Business Saturday. And this is a shopping holiday that's really kind of a U.S. thing meant to base, you know, boost awareness and support for small businesses in the U.S. And this is it's a great thing. I think everyone would agree that it's a great thing to raise this awareness. Um, numbers vary. Definitions of small businesses vary. Uh, it just depends on who you talk to and, you know, who's who's got that definition that day. But as much as 99 percent of all registered businesses in the U.S. somehow fall into that small business category. And you know, let's be honest, you know, the big retailers still dominate the holiday selling season with their ad campaigns and, you know, their billion dollar marketing campaigns. But this day offers a opportunity for small businesses. But there's a bit of a caveat. There's a bit of a rub to this. I mean, I don't know any of you and I haven't looked at any of your websites, but I would bet I would bet uh, that all of you have done an incredible job and worked really hard building terrific looking websites and terrific looking businesses to the point where a lot of the times I don't know if you're a small business by visiting your website. Looks great. Works great. Functionality is awesome. We've gone a long way to really make this look and feel as perfect and, you know, as smooth as possible. But doesn't really scream small business, right? I mean, small business, it's not really a mom and pop shop feel. You've got this really kind of sexy pop and sizzle sleek website that you worked really hard to build. And that's a credit to yourself and your team. But if you want to really capitalize on small business Saturday, you're going to have to let people know you're a small business in some way. No, whether that's a banner, whether that's changing some of the imagery, whether that's, you know, creating some copy, updating that about us page, whatever that might be, you're going to have to let people know if you want to capitalize on that. Otherwise, People land on a page and it looks terrific, but you don't know if it's a franchise, a corporation, a big company. You really have no clue. And when people are shopping like that this time of year, they're shopping in a hurry. We have to keep that in mind. People are shopping differently. Uh, most of the year, people are, we think, about optimizing for mobile, right? We're mobile-based, mobile optimization, build for mobile. But this time of year, people are shopping on laptops and desktops a lot. They're sitting down at home with a list. In fact, we see conversion rates go up to what close to 7%, I think, last year on desktops, where mobile stayed around 3%. Um, more and more people shop on laptops and desktops this time of year. They sit down with their list and their coffee, and I'm going to buy a T-shirt for Susie and, you know, a printer for Johnny and a guitar for Timmy or whatever. And, you know, that's kind of how they go about their shopping. So they're in a hurry. They want to go through these websites as quickly as possible. They're not going to click through 14 links on your site to figure out, who you are, what you are, what you're about. Is this the right place? Um, so you got to make it a little bit evident if you want to capitalize on this kind of thing. And you know, so you might want to plan for this, right? These are things you would want to plan for now. If you're going to capitalize on Small Business Saturday, that's something you want to start baking into your planning and your strategy at this point, rather than wait for November 26th and think, ah, you know, maybe I should probably do something tomorrow. It's probably not going to be as successful as you hope if you do that. And then Cyber Monday rolls around on that Monday, the 29th this year. Um, this one always kind of intrigues me. Cyber Monday generally has the best online deals and consumers take notice. Buyers are aware of this. Sales on this day continue to grow. However, in my experience working with, you know, a lot of the smaller businesses, especially, they overlook Cyber Monday. They focus on Black Friday and Cyber Monday is a date where they're just like, eh, you know, I just run the same promotion that I did all on Black Friday. I just run it all weekend. They don't really treat these as separate events or offer something unique or special or do any kind of campaign unique to this date. And I think that's really a big miss. I think each of these provides an opportunity to grow customers, get new leads, you know, achieve different goals, certainly grab different sets of data from different types of people, um, run different promotions and campaigns. Each of these is a different opportunity and really can be treated as such. And then there's a few more. We're not going to go through all these at depth. I mean, there's a thousand of these things like Hallmark holidays that pop up constantly. But Giving Tuesday is a great one. Uh, it's a day of charitable giving, follows that holiday season. And some companies choose to donate a portion of profits, you know, or even sometimes entire revenue, which is kind of a unique thing. If it's right for your company, it's a great thing. Free shipping day. This is one that I think uh, more and more people take advantage of in a couple of different ways. This year, December 14th, seems to be about that magic day. And this is kind of a lesser known day that usually occurs, you know, right around the middle of December, the 14th, the 15th. Generally, it coincides conveniently with that last day. You can get an order shipped and get it before Christmas. So, you know, we all know that, right? We all have that deadline date. 
So what people do is tie in that kind of, hey, if you want this to come before Christmas, today's your last chance. And, oh, yeah, we're running a promotion as well. And then, of course, Boxing Day. Boxing Day, big thing in Canada, um, not so much here in the States. However, Amex, American Express, did an interesting survey. And this year, more people than ever plan to shop after Christmas to take advantage of post-holiday sales and newly received gift cards, which is kind of interesting. Um, more people have an intent to go out the day after Christmas or to get online and shop the day after Christmas than, than really ever before. So you really shouldn't forget about attracting customers, perhaps setting up a you know, post-Christmas campaign or post-Christmas sale. Maybe you want to sell through some product that you just didn't get a chance to sell through over that holiday season. But again, these are things you'd have to start to plan for now. You'd have to think about now the campaigns and create the content and all this kind of thing rather than wait till December 24th, look around and say, huh, I should probably do something about this stuff. It's not going to be that successful. A um, couple other dates I want to talk about that are definitely important and probably not on top of mind. Production delivery deadlines. This year, this is going to be a biggie with all the shipping and problems and all the different supply chain problems. Everyone has things coming from somewhere, whether you get products sourced from overseas, whether you're getting custom packaging, whether you order stickers from someone and you have them shipped in, know your deadlines. Talk, start talking to your suppliers. Yeah, USPS and UPS, they always have delays at the holiday time. We know they're kind of a hot mess anyhow sometimes. Um, but so if it normally takes two weeks, maybe it takes four weeks this year. But given everything that's happening with cargo ships and planes and shipping and production deadlines, I just saw that, you know, China shut down a bunch of factories and things. So you might want to start having these conversations now to understand how this is really going to impact you now and start planning for it so that when November comes and suddenly it's November 14th and you're out of product and nothing is coming and they're telling you it's going to be six weeks to get it to you. Well, that's after Christmas. That's not really going to help you out much, is it? Um, you need to know these things now. And if you don't start having these conversations now, you could be too late to really act on it and find any alternative uh, means. A code freeze. This is something that every year, uh, if without fail, someone reaches out to me on Black Friday or Cyber Monday or Christmas Eve. Someone reaches out to me every year and, you know, is in a panic. They're sweating. They're, you know, flopping around and they're really upset um, they've gone in, they've tweaked their code that day, that morning, and something's not working. They don't know what to do. Please, please don't go in and start tweaking around in your code. Don't make code changes anything closer than two weeks before these key dates. Give yourself time to make sure your code is stable. Make sure everything is functional and optimized. Um, and leave yourself time to have, to have things corrected if there is an issue. Let your, leave yourself time to test things and check things out and then make changes if things aren't you know, working well. Now, I'm not talking about uploading a picture, changing a, you know, adding a keyword here and there, uploading a blog or something. I'm talking about going into your actual code and, you know, getting a little bit creative in there. If you're going to do that, do that now so you can really make sure everything is working and functional and stable and works the way you want to across all platforms and all mediums and all devices and all these different things, rather than calling me on Black Friday at 5 p.m. and say, you know, people can't check out all day. What do I do? Well, you know, that's not going to be the easiest solution for anybody. And then last, but certainly not least, I mentioned it earlier, but shipping cutoff dates, um, got to know them and you got to communicate it early, communicate them often and tell customers, you know, what is that last date where you can get standard shipping? You need to have this in your shipping policies, you need to have it on your product pages, you need to have it communicated all over the place, maybe a banner, maybe a pop-up, but it needs to be communicated and over-communicated. Otherwise, people are going to be really pissed when they order that product on you know December 16th and it shows up on December 26th. They're not going to be happy. You're going to be dealing with returns and upset customers and it's really going to have the negative effect, the reverse effect of what you really want to have for this holiday season. And that kind of takes us into this next point here. But analyzing and setting goals. Because we know some dates, we know some opportunities that are out there and it's really a matter of just picking and choosing which ones we want to dive into. But by using some of this data, we can best set some of these goals. And in this section, I want to challenge you to really do something a bit deeper, to dig a little bit deeper than just, I want to make some cash. I want to get to have some good sales and good revenue. And to do this, there's a couple things we need to do first. First of all, you know, whether it doesn't matter if it's your first holiday season or you're a veteran, you've been around the block for a few decades, 
kind of need to get prepared, right? I mean, a couple things I always take a look at, top products by units sold and online store searches. These are just a couple simple examples of reports that can really help you figure out um, essentially what idea, you know, what products your customers are interested in. And this really gives you an idea of how much product you should stock and what kind of inventory you need. There's no reason to go big on every single piece of inventory in your, in your, in your store. Take your top five, top five movers, top 10 movers and go, you know, go big on those, but you got to know what those are, right? What are people searching for? Get an idea. The top online store searches. Don't just look at the searches with results found. Look at the ones without, with no results found. What are people looking for in your store that they can't find? Maybe that's an item you need to start carrying or you need to change your verbiage. Maybe you need to change some of the uh, tags and things you're using. But start doing that now. Take a look at what's trending. Start looking at you know, your industry. Look at your competition. Do some research. Figure out what's happening in your industry. Um, that's also going to be pretty interesting and uh, that helps be pretty useful in terms of your buying plan and things like that. In terms of viewing industry reports that like we talked about earlier, you got to know what's happening out there. You got to know about shipping delays and, you know, cargo ships being lined up and all this kind of thing. You got to know what's happening with COVID. You got to know what's happening in the environment, political, business, all these things. You got to be aware of what's going on out there. If you're not, you're going to miss the boat. And if you miss the boat, you know what happens? It's gone. And by the time it's gone and you catch up, you've missed all those sales and all that opportunity. So what happens then? Well, this is where I want to challenge you a little bit. If I asked everyone here, what do you want to get out of Black Friday, Cyber Monday, holiday selling season, all that good stuff, you're going to say, I want to generate more revenue, right? Put it in the first bullet point. I want to make some more money. I want to have good sales. But, you know, I'd really like to see everyone challenge themselves and dig a little bit deeper. Do you have some old product laying around that you can turn into cash? Maybe some old, you know, product from last year that didn't really sell well. You want to clear it out. Maybe you want to generate, uh, you know, new, new leads for your newsletters or get some new email contacts. Maybe you want to get a thousand new followers on Facebook over this holiday market season. Set yourself some goals beyond something that's financial and obvious. Dig a little bit deeper and think about 2022. Because if you think about this holiday season as a springboard into 2022, into the next year, it really changes the way you think about this season. It's not about making as much money as you can in 30 days. It's about setting yourself up for the next year with data and leads because you're going to have all this all this um, increased exposure and traffic and people coming to your site for the first time. It's a great time to get new subscribers, right? It's a great time to sell product to people that, you know, maybe your old customers didn't like this product, but you can mark it down, sell it at cost. The new, new people will buy it at cost and you get out of it and you don't wind up losing your cash, losing cash on it. You can put it back into something next year that makes a profit. These are also really easy things to set a metric on, right? If you have 40 cases of t-shirts that didn't sell last year and you turn around and at the end of the season, you have 35 left, that's a pretty easy metric to measure, right? These are the kind of things that if you really take a look now and give yourself a good, honest, deep dive into your business, what do you have that you can set as a goal? What do you have that you can really try and accomplish beyond making some money? I mean, the end result is going to be similar, right? The end result is going to point towards revenue and profit. But can you dig deeper? Is there is there more than just, yeah, I'd like to make some cash? Is there something a little bit further in there that you can think about? And maybe that is understanding customer behavior. Maybe that is, you know, even more subtleties in there. But dig deep. Dig as deep as you can to find some things that are really, really important to set you up for 2022. Because as we think about your website, as we think about building your website and preparing your website and getting it ready to rock and roll for this, optimizing it, getting it ready, and then keeping that in a state that's ideal for this next year is also key. This is a time where you're going to get so much extra traffic. You're going to be able to collect so much data, get a lot of insight into your website and your brand and your business and all this stuff that it's really, really valuable from that standpoint as well, not just about making cash. I mean, a more majority of traffic today comes through mobile. We know that already. So obviously critical to test your site on mobile devices, but don't forget about desktops, laptops, and everything else. People are going to be sitting down at laptops at home to buy, you know, the, with their shopping list, to do all the shopping. It's got to look good. It's got to work well for them. You can't have broken links. You got to make sure your website is in good shape for your visitors. Nothing is going to put people off faster than a website that doesn't work links that don't work, something that's slow and sloppy and broken. I'm sure none of you have that, but 
be honest with yourself. When's the last time you got on a cell phone and you went into your store as a customer and you actually went through as a customer and clicked on links, added something to a cart, went to the checkout, all the way to the point where you entered your address and looked at the shipping prices. I mean, how often do you do that? Or how often do you go into Chrome incognito and go into your website on, a, on your laptop and go all the way through all that and check it out? Probably not very often. I was with a merchant two days ago, Friday, last Friday, and her conversion came to me because her conversion rate, her conversion rate was low, sub 1%. She was all panicked. Um, so we started going through her website and simply that's what we did. We went incognito and just kind of walked through to see what was going on. Well, her background was silver and her fonts were white. Looked great on some screens. However, when you get to the checkout and the add cart, you couldn't read, you couldn't see the add to cart button because the font was white. Nobody could find the add to cart button. So why do you think her conversions were affected? But she never went as a customer and looked, right? She was just looking through the admins and, you know, looking on the back end. She never went through the front of her store in that way. And that happens more often than we want to admit because we're busy building our store, working on our store, thinking about the back end. We don't see it through a customer's eyes. Um, also, you can consider maybe customizing, having an all, uh, all holiday optimized theme for Black Friday, Cyber Monday and all that. That might be a simpler version to optimizing and converting your customers. Make sure your search function works. And then next, you know, ask fr friends to test your site. Don't dismiss their opinions. Our stores are like our babies. They're like our kids. We're very into them. We are uh, very much, you know, attached to them. So if someone says, hey, man, this isn't working good, don't take it personal. Give it some thought. Uh, have them test on different devices and take that feedback. Another thing else would be site speed. And I want to put this in context as well. It is important. However, keep it in context. What is important is the customer experience. If it loads quickly, it loads smoothly. Everything loads like it should on mobiles and desktops. Don't panic. It'll be okay. Um, if it doesn't, then you should panic and get something done right away. But if it looks good for the customer's perspective, you can take a breath and, uh, you know, put in a bit, a bit of a back burner. A couple other things we'll go through really quick. Um, app audit. Go through and make sure all your apps work. Delete any of these old apps kicking around, or maybe you have four random email marketing apps in there that, you know, you just never got around to using, or you chose one and never deleted the others. Get rid of those things. Just make sure there's no code or anything like that that you need to remove and, and install it. Um, don't run any barrier to entry apps. What I mean is everyone positively absolutely should be collecting email addresses during the season. You should have a pop-up, a good one, something that pops up, it's branded, it looks like it belongs, time somewhere in that, you know, maybe seven to 10 second range to start. Um, you should absolutely have that. What you shouldn't have is something that is, you know, a full screen, something where I can't find the damn X to get out of it. Something that has clowns and balloons and, you know, plays a video and, you know, pops up in one second. So I can't even figure out what the business is, what the brand is or what I'm looking at first. Don't do that. Right. Keep it simple. Keep it classy. Keep it easy. But do 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 it. Absolutely. Sales channels are another. I know we're burning through these pretty quick, but sales channels are another thing. Make sure they work. Make sure you're connected. Make sure you've decided which channels you're going to sell on and then have a strategy for each one. You know, maybe you're going to sell last year's stuff on Amazon. You're going to drop a uh, little card in each box saying, hey, check us out, check our website out and subscribe to our newsletter. Get that little omni-channel deal going and then uh, sell your regular stuff on your on your website to kind of keep that intent, those intentional shoppers on your main store. But give some thought to your channels and that strategy for channels. And then shipping and packing. It's a biggie. It's a really biggie. I mean, unboxing is a huge thing, right? People spend a lot of cash on shipping because they don't have product weights that are correct. People don't think about custom shipping rules. So they're just trying to squeeze everything into the same, you know, box, into the same kind of, you know, shipping rule. It doesn't always work. So do you need these kind of sh custom shipping rules? If so, let's set it up now. Shipping strategy, are you doing free shipping? Are you doing flat rate shipping? Are you doing, you know, custom carrier shipping? What about international shipping? I can use custom packaging. Custom inserts or swag. If so, you probably need to order it now. It's time to think about it. And then certainly last and not least, people love these unboxing videos. I'm a 48-year-old guy. Don't quite get it, but, man, people love these things. What would happen if 
you know, you send a box to someone's house, they open it up on the video, got a thousand friends watching it, and you get some dirty old shredded up newspaper shoved in a box and your product is just kind of tossed in there. It doesn't look so good, does it? But you get something like this, you know, it's got a nice little card in there and a sticker and it's kind of nice and tidy. It gives a good impression. Um, it's really your last chance to give a really positive impression. It's really important. Google Analytics is another biggie. Make sure you have it. If you don't have it, do it after this. After you leave here today. It's free. Set it up. Even if you're not going to look at it after the holidays, collect that data. Get gift cards enabled. Uh, heat maps are great. And I'm sure Derek could probably suggest some. Um, Lucky Orange is a pretty popular one. But uh, setting up a heat map is a great time of year to do this. If you want to understand why people abandon carts or maybe get a little more insight into how people use your website, it's a great time of year with this increased traffic. So if you don't also, if you don't have a COVID response page, another good suggestion. It shows people that you're real, that they can build trust, that's a real person who gives a damn about other people. Um, just a great suggestion to add to your page. These are just other little kind of key things you can think about. Drop it in to kind of maybe give yourself just that little bit of extra. And that's what this is all about, a little bit of extra. And then as we think about wrapping up the holiday, hopefully you get that little bit of a gap between that kind of final shipping madness and Christmas. You can have a glass of wine, sleep for a couple of days, uh, catch your breath. And then you go back into analysis mode, right? We're never done. We go back to analysis mode. What did we learn from the holiday selling season? What can we take away from it? You know, I'm going to be looking at sales by product and what marketing campaigns worked, what discount codes were working for me. Um, traffic by referral reports. I'm going to be looking at billing countries for selling internationally to understand, you know, where traffic was coming from. These are things I already have bookmarked. I've already kind of gone in and kind of flagged some of these custom reports and kind of identified what I'm going to be looking at. I'm going to be breaking down first time versus returning custom reports because I want to start figuring out cost per acquisition so I can start thinking about future sales planning and marketing budget allocations in 2022. This is all stuff that I'm going to be grabbing as soon as this holiday season is over because I want to use this increased data, this increased traffic as a bit of a source or resource to start building on for that next year. I want to have 2022 be better than 2021. And I can't really do that if I don't start using this information to make better decisions. And then last and certainly not least, top online store searches report. What are people looking for in my store that they can't find? If people are searching for a red t-shirt and they're not finding a red t-shirt, maybe my verbiage isn't right. Maybe I need to add red t-shirts. They don't have red t-shirts. Uh, maybe I need to create a different collection. Maybe I need to make changes in my store, right? It can be just a really simple, quick and easy and dirty way to figure out how to make some changes in my store that can immediately impact conversions and sales and better meet that customer things that customers are looking for. Just a couple of the really, really, really simple things that, um, we can bring to you can bring to the table very quickly to really even make January sales pop a little bit because people are tight, people are a little bit you know broke, and it's a little sale sales tighten up. So if you can give them what they want, if you can meet the expectations, you're going to be in that much of a better place. Now I want to be respectful of everyone's time, but I want to go through a quick review real quick, and then as always, I want to uh, I do have a bit of an announcement I'll make, Derek, and I won't get fired mm -hmm. this time. <laughs> I do have I do have a bit of a good one. In fact, I'm going to skip the review. I'm just going to go right to this announcement. Um, so Shopify Los Angeles, for those of you who are in L.A., we will be reopening. Uh, there's a fire inspection going on today. So provided we pass that, we'll be reopening next week. And I'm going to send Derek a couple of codes you can include in the email for I'm going to offer all the attendees here, our podcast studio and our photo studio for two hours fully equipped for 50 bucks. Awesome. So anyone, anyone wants to use that. So you can share that out in the emails and things. Um, so if you want to do podcasting or book the photo studio, welcome to do that. Uh, that use 50 bucks and you can go in there and go crazy with it. Awesome. For all our people in the Los Angeles area. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I can do the same for New York if you're in the New York area as well. We have a space there as well. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So we could, yeah. And that's right. I hear the New York, uh, the new office there is amazing. A lot of people were talking about it actually. Nice. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Uh, share that link with us in chat. We'll be sure to put it in the show notes and give everybody that opportunity. The Dragon of the West says Shopify LA is a great resource. So it's so awesome to see, Chris, you're making a difference for merchants uh, all across the world, but also, of course, at home in the LA area. 
Chris, that was amazing. Thanks so much. We got one uh, question from you. Where was it? Uh, where is it? So th the question from Amy is about this last day to ship slash the free shipping day uh, concerns. What are your thoughts on, on when this deadline is going to be? I think last year is because we had so much e-commerce. There was a big delay, but this year I'm thinking we will be ready for it. But what do you think? Yeah, when I, I went to USPS and they said that they said the 14th, but again, it is USPS. So <laughs> yeah, that's all subject to change. Um, yeah. They're saying the 14th. I think I would probably build in some cushion. I would probably be looking at telling people the 10th or 11th or something like that to allow for, you know, it also does depend on the business. If you only ship once a week in your business, you had to build in that date too. If you only ship on Thursday and someone orders on Friday, you got to build in those extra days on that yeah. as well. So it does depend a little bit on your business. Yeah, absolutely. I've shared the links for everyone here in chat. We can put them up here. Uh, and Antonio quickly says, should we be running Google Analytics even if we're not using Google Ads? Yes, Google Analytics is like just the everyone default. Everyone installs this tool in their store thing. It's pretty important. Now, it's not going to matter too much for earlier starting stores, but over time, you're going to learn to use it as a way to track acquisition sources, mm -hmm. user behavior through the site. And then at one point, you'll upgrade into a tool like Peel Analytics for yeah. additional uh, insights into the store. So that's my quick uh, note to Antonio there. Chris, thanks so much for your time with us. We're going to go right into our next session. Yep.